Hello, my name is Mark. My name is Mark. And we are students of Ghana Christian International High School. And we urge you all to subscribe to His Girl TV. Hello there. You are welcome to His Girl TV. Um, before I begin with our topic for today, let me remind you to please subscribe to our channel. Please subscribe before you leave the page. This is the only channel where you get access to government, um, history, and CRS. And all the um, lessons we upload here are strictly based on the WASI syllabus. Uh, you can also get Liberian um, 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 WASI history syllabus all also here. Okay, good. So, um, today we are going to look at the, the British... Asante Wars. <clears throat> the British Asante Wars. Okay. Um, we we might have heard a lot about the the relations uh, between the British and the Asante Empire um, during our pre-colonial um, 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 Ghana. And so today we are going to look at why were there so many wars fought between the British and the Asante uh, Empire. You know, if you look at all the ethnic groups, all the all the all the states, and I say states, I'm referring to the individual people, the dangerous state, the Achim state, and co. When you look at, I mean, when you look at all the states in the in Ghana today, the Asante Empire fought so many wars uh, with the with the with the with the I mean with the British more than any other states and so today we are going to look at the reasons for such wars reasons for the frequent anglo asante wars in the 19th century anglo asante war if if if, if we hear anglo we are referring to english okay so anglo asante wars is the same as british asante wars so let's go in there and look at our lesson objectives for today so our lesson objectives for today is quite simple um, by the end of this lesson, you should be able to um, discuss um, the reasons. You should be able to discuss the reasons for the frequent Anglo Asante wars um, during the 19th century. Okay, so what were some of the reasons that made the British always wage war against the Asante? So this is what we are going to look at. So you get your pen and paper ready. So let's begin with the introduction. Good. So there were repeated wars, several wars between both the uh, British and, of course, the Asante. And these wars took place um, before and then during uh, the partitioning of what Africa. Uh, and if you have not also watched the video on partitioning of Africa, I have it in there. Please go and check. I may add a link in the description so that you can click on it. So both uh, before and during the partition of Africa, there had been several and several wars and repeated wars between both the Asante and the British as well. Now these wars uh, between the Asante and the British were referred to as the Anglo Asante Wars. Okay, and I have already told you that. Good. Now. The British and the, I mean, Asante fought about 10 major wars, 10 major wars. And uh, even though they had fought other, they had other similar wars, but the major ones were 10. 1807, they fought. 1811, they fought. Between 1814 and 1816, they fought. 1823 to 1824, uh, the Insamanko War, they fought. 1826. 1863, they fought the Dodoa War. 1869, they fought. 1873, 1874, the Saganat War or the Sagaranti War. They fought. 1869, they fought. 1900, the Ya Asantua War, they fought. So, on all these occasions, Asante Empire and the British uh, constantly engaged in a battle. And this is a picture of uh, a sketch made by some of the missionaries who um, happens to witness the war 
and he sketched this as you've seen Asantis over here and the British over there so Asantis here and the British over there good so let's go in there and then look at how why were these wars so frequent among the two parties so let's begin with the first one so the first um, reason for the for the constant war was an economic reason okay and this economic reason was basically trade trade issues that was the economic reason trade issues you know the british saw that asante was the most um, powerful empire okay among all the ethnic groups they were the powerful the british were not ready to allow the asante to control the whole coast because of the coastal trade there was a need to keep asante in check in order to, uh, to prevent them from attacking other coastal states and subsequently taking absolute um, control of the lucrative world, um, trade along the coast so mainly one of the reasons why the asantis came to uh, the british came to ghana or to west africa was to trade and so when they got to the gold coast um, trading with the people with the indigenous people became very difficult because asante was constantly attacking the southern state if i say the southern states i'm talking about the coastal states asante constantly attacked them um, in order to subdue them because some of these states were under the control of the asante they were vassal states to the asante empire and so the british wanting to trade with these people including the asantes even themselves and then Asante invading and causing all kinds of um, wars the british sorry um the british wanted to keep asante in check so they attack asante in order to bring asante down to subdue asante so that peace will prevail for the british to trade i hope you understand it the british wanted to trade with the local people including the asantes themselves however asante which was the most powerful and stubborn among the empires constantly waged wars against the um, um, coastal states or the southern states okay and in that environment trade could not flourish and so there was the need for the british to silence the asante empire and the only way that they could do that was to attack them and probably make them a colony or a vassal state good so let's look at the next one the next um reason for the anglo asante wars was also the maintenance of security the maintenance of security now the british wanted to maintain some level of security okay because they felt threatened and unsecured uh, by asante's what by asante's power okay they felt that asante could attack them at any time along the coast and asante's were were, were attacking the fantasies along the coast and the british were also there and so the british themselves did not feel safe okay um leaving the asantis to constantly attack the coastal states so in the first place the british wanted to maintain what security along the coast uh, so that they could be convinced that their fort and castles built along the coast were not going to be under any threat because the fantasies as i'm talking about were living closer to the um to the british and so uh the british seeing i mean i mean sitting down and looking at asante coming and coming invading the coast they felt threatened that if they do not try to subdue asante in order to maintain security in the colony or in in the southern states they themselves were not safe okay so it's like you are sitting in your house and you've seen that there is a thief who is um i'm constantly attacking your neighbor if you don't help your neighbor to fight the thief so that you can capture the thief and put him in jail what will happen is that the moment the thief finishes with whatever he's doing with your neighbor the thief will come to you next and so that is what was um happening here the british became concerned that if they do not subdue asante if they do not uh, 
conquer Asante and make Asante a colony so that there could be peace. They themselves were not safe. And so that amounted to some of the reasons why some of the wars were fought among the Asantes and the British. If you if you remember the the war the 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 in Samanko war um, in which uh, Charles McCarthy, a British um, governor, fought on the side of the Dentra, you could see that the reason why um, Governor McCarthy Hill did that uh, was because he wanted to subdue the I mean Asante you know, and conquer them so that they could trade peacefully with the people. And in that war, it was disastrous for Charles McCarthy. But then, let's go in the task for some other day. The next one was the introduction of um, Christianity and also um, Western education. And I also have a video on the coming of the Europeans, the reasons for the coming of the Europeans. So should, in case you have not watched that, please go and watch that so that you can understand some of these issues here. Now, bear also in mind that some, one of the reasons for the coming of the um, Europeans in West Africa was primarily to um, spread Christianity and also Western education. All right. So Christianity and then Western education. Now, how do you spread Christianity and Western education when there is no peace in the area that you want to spread Christianity? Today, if you go to area like Boko in the northern part of the country, um, there is insecurity. Uh, teachers are saying that they will not go to school because the people in there are engaged in armed conflict. So how do you work in such an environment when there is war? And this war was caused by the Asantes. The wars were never caused by the southern states. It was constantly caused by the Asante um, nation or empire. And so if they are able to um, 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 conquer and then um, add Asante to the colony, I think that peace will prevail. Okay, and so some of the missionaries and the British officials could not carry out that task of introducing um, Christianity and Western education to the people um, without a peaceful or without a peaceful what atmosphere. All right, yes, and so the Asantes were then considered to be the troublesome because they were the one who constantly invaded what the southern state. And so there was a need for the British to engage the Asantes on so many battles so as to try and subdue them to actually uh, uh, keep calm for the introduction of Christianity and um, Western education in the then Gold Coast. The next um, reason for the um, constant um a battle between the uh, uh, the the british and the asante was the british um derogatory remarks about the asante hine or about i mean asante you know asantes have um this um tradition that you don't talk ill about their king the i mean the asante hine or even the Asante nation in general. And if you do, they will attack you. Uh, quite um, recently, Odike, who was speaking on uh, Europa FM, made some infamous uh, statements about the Asante Hine with regards to Galamse. And he was chased after. <laughs> You know, I mean, even, <laughs> it's funny, I'm using the word chase, af I mean, chase, I mean, after. But he was sought after, let me put it that way. He was asked to come and apologize. It got to a time that he was even banned from coming into the Asante Empire. Yes, 21st century. He was banned from coming into the I mean, Asante Empire. There, there have been issues whereby you hear that somebody has spoken ill about the Asante and then all of a sudden you hear that the Asante youth blah 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 would just um, have a press conference to warn anybody or they will come after you and all of that you are familiar with that that thing did not start now 
all right it did not start now no asante kingdom you do not speak against them or you do not speak against the throne or the king now the british did not understand this because to them all what the asantes were doing were barbaric even though they were not all that the asantes were doing were uncivilized even though they were not so some of the british um governors i mean le- let me tell you this any british governor that came to the coast that was appointed and came to the coast would have to notify the asante that you have come you are this is you you have to introduce yourself to the asante yes that is how i mean politics was done in those days now some of the british officials deliberately refused to accept asante's what laws and customs asante have laws and what customs and some of these laws and customs are that you do not speak ill about the king or the kingdom one british governor by name sir charles mccarthy showed a contemptuous what attitude um, towards the asante at that time he was known as Os- osei bonsu when he referred to osei bonsu as what a barbarian when charles mccarthy was appointed the governor and came to the southern states i mean he was in cape coast and he was asked to um, introduce himself to the Asante, uh, Asante Hine, then Osei Bosu. He said, no, why should he do so? Because those people are barbarian. And Asante had to, you know, harbor that and find the right time to attack Sir Charles McCarthy and his people for saying that about the Asante. And, and 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 the fate of I mean Sir Charles McCarthy was that his head was cut in the in Samanko War. The Asantes cut the head of him, his head was chopped off and sent to um, Kumasi as a war relic to go and display. And that is what happened to such I mean Sir Charles McCarthy. Yes, and so even today you don't speak anyhow about the Asante. But because the British had refused to accept our customs as a people, you know, our laws as a people, they were constantly having issues with the Asante. Okay, and that um, partly contributed to the frequent Anglo Asante wars that were fought in the 19th century. Good, let's take a look at more of the um, reasons for the Asante Anglo Anglo Asante wars. The next one was the harboring of Asante uh, refugees that and wanted men by the British. So the British also had an attitude of harboring or keeping um, some Asante um, refugees and also wanted men, people who had committed a crime in Asante and they are supposed to be punished. They, you see them, they run away to the British along the coast. And so the British, in order to return them to the Asante Empire for the proper punishment to be meted out to them, what they, the British do is that they then decide to what? To keep them, harbor them, and prevent Asante from having access to them. And one example that happened was uh, with a certain man, a certain man known as Kosijani. Uh, um, Kosijani um, was accused of... Um, refusing to hand over a gold nugget, a gold nugget that he had allegedly um, um, discovered in the Asante graveyard. So uh, um, Kofi Jani had discovered some gold nugget in the Asante graveyard. And once you discover a gold nugget in the Asante graveyard, you are supposed to return it to the Asante Hine because the gold is not for you. Asantes bury their kings with gold. So if you have discovered a gold nugget in their graveyard, you should return the gold to the Asante Hine. Kosi Jani did not do that. What he decided to do was that he decided to run away with the gold. 
So he ran to Cape Coast, and at that time, the Cape Coast um, um, governor, or the British governor at Cape Coast, was known as uh, Richard Pine. And Richard Pine harbored um, Kusijani, kept him in the castle, prevented the Asante um, nation from having access to Kusijani to punish Kusijani. And that provoked the Asante to march on to the coast. In 1863, they marched from Kumasi, walked all the way to the, to the coast, Cape Coast, to forcefully capture Jani. I, I don't know what you think about it, but it is what it is. That is it. To forcefully capture him, you know, for punishment. Let's take a look at the last one. Uh, probably then we'll bring our discussion to an end. Now, one of the most important reasons also that led to the, the frequent Angulo Asante Wars was also the Sweet River Convention Agreement. Sweet River. There is a river between Cape Coast and Elmina um, known as the Sweet River. I don't know those who are around the area. Kakum area there. Of course, Elmina there about Sweet River. There was an agreement. This, I mean, this Sweet uh, River Convention was an agreement between the British. Okay, it was between the British and the Dutch, and the agreement was for the two uh, countries to exchange forts and castles. So the British were going to give all their forts to the Dutch, and the Dutch were also going to give all their forts to the British. So by this convention or agreement, the Dutch were to take over four British forts, which were situated east. So which were situated east. So the Dutch fort were supposed to be Mori, Coromante, Apam, and Accra, lying east of the river. So lying east of what of the river. So it means that the Dutch were supposed to take all these forts. From Mori, okay, uh, up to Akromante, up to Accra. That was the f the 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 forts that the Dutch were supposed to take. So look at the map on your right hand side here. Um, where would you think the Dutch were supposed to take? So the Dutch were supposed to take here. So let's draw the line here, the Sweet River line here. So it means that the Dutch were supposed to take all the fort going this area. All right. Yeah, so you see we have Mankesim here, we have Solpon, we have um, Winneba, okay, and then we have Gumwa, then it goes to Accra Strait, you see that area. Yeah, so the Dutch were supposed to have all the forts located here. Now, the British on the other side were also supposed to have forts of Benya, which is now Apollonia, Disco, um, Second D, and then um, commander. So per the agreement, to, per the agreement, the Dutch were supposed to, including Elmina, including Elmina, per the agreement, to, the British were supposed to have these forts that belong to the Dutch in the western side. So here, this area. All right. Yes. This area. Now, look at this area. So Cape Coast, Elmina is here. Uh, commander is here. Um, Takradi is here. And then this code second D, it goes on and on. Now, this was the agreement. So per that agreement, the Dutch, the British were exchanging fort. So it means that the British would take all the fort over here at the western part, including Elmina, Commander, Amtakwadi and Co. Then the Dutch would take these areas, Maureen, Akromante, and all of that. Now, why was this? An agreement a cause for concern for the Asante nation and so because of that they would go to war with the with the British now this was a cause for concern among the Asante nation because of the position of Elmina this is Elmina here all right because of the position of Elmina the Asante did not want this convention or an agreement to take place because if they allow the agreement to take place, what happens is that Elmina, which before this convention had always been for the Asante nation, the only town that was conquered 
and controlled by the Asante. Okay, in central region today. Not in central region, but along the coast, okay, of of Ghana, of central region, along the coast of central region, because I'm being specific. Along the coast of central region was Elmina. Elmina was a vassal state of the Asante Empire. And Elmina was for the Dutch. It belonged to the Dutch. So it was a Dutch fort when they uh, when they were ambassador um, states to Asante. Elmina was a Dutch fort. So even the Dutch governor at Elmina was paying land rent to the Asante. Elmina's land rent, uh, I mean land rent was paid to the Asante by the Dutch. And the Elmina was one of the important source of gun. Asantes were getting gun and gun powders from Elmina. So they were getting gun and gun powders from Elmina for their wars against the British. And they were also um, getting land rent for Elmina. Now, by this convention, you know that Elmina now here is going to be in the hands of the British. Let me write B here. So that you know. It's going to be in the hands of the British. Now, Asante had a cordial relationship with the Dutch. So it wasn't a problem for the Dutch paying um, um, rent or, or maybe supplying Asante with guns through the coast of Elmina because the Dutch were really not interested you know, in colonizing, you know, that kind of, they were only interested in trade, but the British wanted more. So, the Dutch, now leaving Elmina, and Elmina now going to the hands of Asante, meant that, uh, Elmina now going to the hands of the British, meant that Asante will not, will no more have access to the land rent, and would also not get the uh, what do you call it the gun and gun powder that they used to get because the british will not allow them to get access to those and the british will not do it so the british were arc rivals of the asante so asante marched or stormed the coast to prevent the the exchange of the fort and to secure almina uh, and we will look at that war known as the serganat war in 1874, where the Asantes marched on to the coast to go and secure Elmina so that Elmina will not fall in the hands of the British. All right, good. So, um, we've come and we've come to an end to with, with today's discussion. We've come to the end of today's discussion. So, yeah, I think you've 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 been educated. Um, so subscribe to the channel try your hand on this exercise for me you can scribble under the the comment section you can also write any topic that you may want us to look at and we will be gladly to do that